Hello again and welcome back to 27 Fox Place. If you're new here, my name is Randy and in today's video I'm going to be basically tearing apart my kitchen. <laughs> I've had these clear organizers sitting in my garage for months now and they are the perfect size and fit for the more narrow cabinets that I have in the kitchen. They don't fit the entire depth of the cabinet but I have the option to put something small in front if I need to. I have some cabinets that are overcrowded while others are almost empty, so my goal today is to redistribute everything in a way that makes sense and to utilize the space that's available in a much better way. The first step is to empty all of the cabinets that I need to organize so that I can assess what I have, and then I can categorize the contents in a way that makes more sense. Of course, what makes sense to me may not make sense for everybody. This cabinet works well, so I'm going to leave it the way it is. I thought I would try and make room on this top shelf to keep all of my serving dishes together. Ideally, I don't want to have to use more than two hands to get to what I need. The more things I have to move, the harder it is to put things away. <laughs> so while I could stack everything neatly on this shelf, it's not likely to stay that way because it would just be too hard to maintain. So I'll have to come up with a better solution. I used to take my lunch to work in these insulated bags and they were always too small, but now that the lining is damaged, there's really no point in keeping them. I plan to group all of the food storage containers that I use on this side of the kitchen, so I need to relocate everything else. I've had the holiday bakeware taking up space in this cabinet that I definitely need to find a better place for. I'm going to try to avoid having to reposition these shelves. I have the lower shelf set for short items so that the upper shelves are more accessible for my height. This cabinet contains a mix of things that I almost never use and things that I use the most often. <laughs> and I'm constantly shuffling things around to get to what I need. So I'm going to relocate almost everything in this cabinet and get rid of anything that I just don't use. These three drawers are full of things that I maybe use a few times a year, if at all. I have cake decorations that I never use and some birthday candles. Because I rarely go in these drawers, I keep forgetting what's in here, like these popsicle molds that I keep forgetting about. And these seasoning packets are long past expired, so I'm going to toss them and I'll find a better place for the rest. I thought this cabinet would be a good place to keep the mason jars, but as you'll see, I ended up moving them to a better spot. If you're new to my channel, I would love to have you subscribe, and if you like this video, be sure and give it a thumbs up. It's the easiest way to support my channel. I found new plastic lids to replace all the old metal lids that come with the mason jars, and it turns out that the mason jar lids fit these little drawers perfectly. So I ended up keeping the extra metal lids in these drawers, and I decided to store the new gray lids with the jars. I had to break up this project into separate days. The first day was basically just a brainstorming session, and I spent most of my time trying to figure out where everything should go and which containers to use where. Whenever I'm working on a big project like this, I tend to start with a rough draft, and as you'll see in the before and afters, I also tend to make a few little adjustments to the final draft as well. As you'll see later, I ended up rearranging these shelves so that I could add an extra shelf in this cabinet. And by adding that extra shelf, it made room for a whole nother row of these organizers. As I emptied the cabinets, I started grouping things into zones by food storage, mixing and baking, and electrical appliances. And before I quit for the day, I had a pretty good idea of where I wanted everything to go. And because everything was on the counter, it gave me the perfect excuse to order takeout. There are many ways to group things into categories. Grouping by size, 
type or purpose, and accessibility are all important things to consider, and how many subcategories you should use is just a personal choice. Some groupings are obvious, like wine accessories or spatulas, <laughs> but sometimes there's just Monica's closet. I started again the following day with a fresh set of eyes and with everything grouped together in the area that I wanted it to go, but the first thing that I wanted to do was clean the insides of the drawers and cabinets. I hadn't planned on changing this top shelf, but when I took a closer look, I noticed that there were some things that I should declutter, which of course led to another game of Tetris. Once everything was cleaned out, I started with the most obvious choices. I wanted to keep larger items like mixing bowls and colanders in this corner cabinet and arrange them in a way that would make it easy to get them in and out of the cabinet. I wanted to put these smaller bowls inside a bin so that I could keep them together without having to dig around inside the cabinet. The taller bottles used to contain kombucha and I removed the labels so that I could reuse them. And I did the same thing with the glass jars that contained artichoke hearts. And the black containers I've been saving from takeout orders to use for meal prep. 
I organized this cabinet not too long ago and so far it's worked out well so I don't plan to make any changes here. Turntables can be a great option to organize corners when you have a variety of small miscellaneous items to store. I'm using bins in this cabinet because they work better for things that don't stack well like bags and lids. Ideally, I would prefer to have all of the electrical appliances in one central location, but my kitchen just doesn't have the space for that. So instead, I've had to create subcategories by size. My goal is to create a system that is as efficient as possible and I want to store things that I use every day within easy reach like food storage and bowls, while things that I use less often I can have farther away. I don't use the electrical appliances every day so I wanted to put them farther away from the sink and stove. I've created a few broad categories for these clear bins. I have a variety of molds and presses, but my tortilla press was too heavy to keep in a bin. I also have a variety of serving utensils that I was able to store in these bins. And once I took care of all the larger categories, I started to arrange what was left in the drawers. I will add a link in the description box for as many things as I can. Of course, if you have any questions, be sure and leave me a comment and I'll try and find an answer. Mason jars and the lids are overpriced online, so it's better to look for them in the stores. And I find the same is true for the clear bins. As I mentioned earlier, I found these bins last year and I grabbed them before they sold out. The drawers were harder to organize into groups because there weren't as many matching items. So it was just easier to organize things by size and how they fit in the drawer. Before the pandemic, mason jars were an affordable option for food storage, but now you really have to hunt to find a good deal, and I was lucky enough to find a set at Walmart recently. The jars were about a dollar each, and I honestly wouldn't pay more than that. I put all the new mason jars in the dishwasher, and now that they're clean, I can put them away and make sure everything fits in the cabinet. I was having a little bit of trouble getting all of these lids organized. But as you'll see later, I decided to switch out these gray baskets for clear ones. I had to steal the bins I had in the fridge, but I think they made a big difference in this cabinet. And the clear bins will make it easy for anyone who has to use the kitchen. I wasn't sure what I was going to do with all the baking supplies that I usually use during the holidays until I remembered that I had an extra basket in the pantry. <laughs> so I'm going to sort through everything and declutter what I don't need before I put it away in the pantry.
This cabinet is another spot that I struggle with. I keep all of my sheet pans and muffin tins in this cabinet. And there's a few things in here that were either gifts or they're just things that I just don't use anymore. So I'm going to clear out the clutter to make this cabinet more functional. I've been meaning to clean out the silverware drawer forever, so I decided that this would be a great time to finally get it done. And it was definitely long past due.
add labels to the bins after I've had a chance to test out the new arrangement. And I want to wait to see if I need to make any adjustments before I add the labels. I also wanted to mention that I plan on doing a tour once I finish organizing the kitchen. This video will take care of most of the kitchen, but I still have to organize the cabinets where I keep the food and spices, so be sure and watch out for that video as well. The last thing I wanted to do today is move my stand mixer and then I need to wipe down all the countertops. I'm definitely glad I took the time to organize my cabinets. I just wish I knew where I put everything. That's the biggest disadvantage of getting organized. It's only been a few days but I still catch myself looking for something in the wrong place.
that's all for today and thank you so much for watching. If you like this video be sure and give it a thumbs up and if you haven't done so already be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to turn on notifications. If you've done that already and you still don't receive notifications you may need to change the settings on your device. So I'll say goodbye for now and I hope to see you in the next video.